show you how to install an assortment of 220 plugs and some 110 outlets all on this breaker box sub panel outlet combo so mr professor who might be interested in your video somebody that's got a, a portable workshop maybe a shed or cargo container shipping container something that you're just trying to get power to for your workshop Running welders, plasma cutters, air compressors, grinders, hook up a washer and dryer for your wife and score a few brownie points, or maybe just a clean pair of britches, and of course light. Stick around because you might call me a hack the way that I got this stuff ran, or I got some other tips and tricks that might save you a few bucks. I decided to pick up this all-in-one because I felt like it would make a great video and teach you guys how to install electrical super easily. Just a quick disclaimer, this is a cargo container workshop. It's a portable building. It's not something that needs to be up to code. It's not hardwired into my electrical. If you're somebody that cares about permits, inspections, code, rules, regulations, you're putting it into an actual building or something that's permanent, Probably not the video for you, Karen. Yeah. Traditional way to do this. Buying a breaker box and then outlets and wire and this and that. But then, if you're not experienced, you might just get in over your head. It's all in one box. We'll definitely save the newbie a headache or two. To start with, we're going to have to dismantle this so that we can get it screwed to the wall. To do that, you can take out these screws. First set of screws allows that to come off. We're gonna have to pull these ones and these ones. Once you've got the screws out of the front and the ones out of the walls, you can push out a little bit on this, pull it out, and get it out of your way. I also recommend pulling these screws out of the cover and removing it so we can set that off to the side and it doesn't flop down on you. I used a self tapping screw and I drilled through from the back. So that I got holes. Selected a location. One screw, two screw, three screw, four screw. Secure it to the walls, what you're trying to do. Next step is to source a cord, knock out a punch out, and bring power in. You're gonna want a 50 amp cord, which is six gauge, and it'll have four different wires in it. Red, black, green, and white. If you're not lucky enough to have RV cords laying around, you can go to Home Depot and pick up this SOOW generator cord by the foot. Along with the plugs for the end. Since I'm a difficult sort, I wanted my power to come in through the top. Saying that I need one of these uh, part numbers to do a hub through. Kind of thinking that if I just go ahead and cut this, Use my little cut 50 plasma cutter and cut a hole in there. Looks like I need to enlarge it just a tad bit. Hole in the bottom of that stretched out. wire down through that and if you snug it up just enough to hold that so it's not going nowhere but don't completely mash that guys and risk you know pinching them together inside or, or damaging them or anything like that so don't get overzealous so you got those wires ran into there I put mine up through the wall went ahead and cut a slit in the wall I'm gonna beat that top out with a hammer so that my cord can go down and down. Dry bar action here. Oh yeah. There we go, we got to fit out. Zip tied up. 
code spec zip ties. I'm tired of slamming your cord in your container door? I used a angle grinder, cut a slice in the wall, used a big hammer, knocked that slice out, and now I can put cords right down through there. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use a flap wheel though, go ahead and smooth that out. Simple thing about buying a panel like this, you already see where the colors go. So you get all the ends stripped and you just connect them to the largest lugs, whatever color they are. The greens go to there, the whites go to there, and then what two are left? Black and red, which black goes to there, red goes to there. So there we are. For the panel installation, we are complete. All these plugs and stuff will work as soon as you plug in your RV cable to your 220 plug. I already have a couple RV plugs. Plug in or unplug and make sure the breaker's off or it'll arc. So for me, it was pretty easy just to come over and plug in the other end of the wire. But I am going to open up the breaker box and just show you that it's literally the same four wires at the other end and you connect it the exact same. Connect the green to the green spot, white to the white spot, red and black to your to your breaker and you plug it in. I get the screw out and this pops out. But say you got a cord coming in, exactly like I said, the greens go to the greens, the whites go to the whites, and on a main panel they're combined. But then the red and the black goes to the breaker and it clips on. We have 50 amp wire. We use a 50 amp breaker. If you found this video useful for setting up 220 power, a sub panel in your garage, in your shed, in your basement, in your workspace, in your container, in your outbuilding, whatever it is, go ahead and hit that like button before you click away because this is pretty much done. Go ahead and take all your screws and get them all put into your panel and your installation is done don't plug something in while this is on you want to shut it off plug in and then turn it on my container already came with this conduit outlets and it's already got some fluorescent lights I'm gonna be adding some circuits to tie all that in to this box so once that was unhooked took out the switch and then undid the wire ties to pull this out. My hope is that now that I don't need it down here going up that I can use this piece of conduit at the other end. Scrap wire pile. I'm going to grab me some extension cord. Shove a piece of that up and in there. I'm going to strip it. Got the ends of the extension cord uh, stripped back and I'm just going to go ahead and put them in the second screws here now I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in bring that cord right down and in through that clamp ring I'm gonna put the extension cord through one of its own you could get this style so now I gotta strip all this get it connected to its proper colors the cord that I installed we ran the white to the whites we ran the green down to the greens and in the black goes to a breaker which you then hook to this side and push in. And on your panel, you got to take out that box for that breaker. This is another uh, absolute hack that I'm sure is going to gain some hate down below, but it is a good budget method to getting yourself a nice long extension cord and an outlet. So you buy yourself a perfectly good extension cord and you cut it in half. Not really in half though, you cut it with just a few feet on the female end. And that end, I'm going to show you how to install into your breaker box as an outlet. Then, anytime you want to run your welder or something, which you can hook up with these little pigtails, you just plug it in with that. First, we got our punch outs punched out for this, which we're going to call an outlet. It went up through there. We got it fed in and tightened up, and then again, you just put your proper colors to the proper spots. Green goes to here, white went up to here, and then we got the red and black, which go to the middle, onto your breaker, and then you clip in the breaker. So to put 
put this back together. Those back up in. We've got these two screws at the bottom. And then one from each side. And then you've got this piece. Make sure that all your pop outs are out to fit your breakers. And then your last two screws. And then you can reattach your uh, door if you want to. This week you watched me cut a hole in the wall of my perfectly good cargo container. If not, go back and check out that video. Alright guys, till next time, keep building shit. If you want to help me beat the evil algorithms, hit that thumbs up button. I'm just kind of a small YouTuber trying to grow.